Youngpreneurs Podcast, episode number 112, with your host, Victor Ahipeni. What is up, team? Another day, another podcast, and I am so stoked to be here. We have a cool episode today with Matt Pike, and Matt is from uh, Sky, Fly High Media, and he's 19 years old, so another 19-year-old entrepreneur, and he has been in the game since he was around 16 years old. He left left school and he uh, actually pursued a professional basketball career which we didn't touch on too much he was a professional basketballer at around 16 and now he is on uh, the early stages of growing his social media and marketing empire he obviously looks up to the likes of Gary V and hopefully we're talking to the future Gary Vaynerchuk and he's got a passion to help local businesses boost their brand and get more exposure, which I think is super cool. He does that through blogs, social media, websites, and uh, marketing. We have all the links that we talked about on the website, www.passiveincomeyoung.com. And you can also pick up my training, which is a four-step video series on how you can launch a video for zero, uh, launch a business online for zero dollars using the skills and expertise that you already have. So, finally, guys, don't forget jump over to iTunes, leave a rating and a review. If you know we're 112 episodes deep, so if you haven't had the chance yet. Make sure you check out the back catalogue, but please subscribe, leave a rating and a review. I love hearing what you are all up to, and you know, share it with your friends. If you think there's someone who would get some value out of it, then I would love that also. We're going to jump into the episode with Matt Pike from Fly High Media. All right, guys, you keep living life on your own terms. You're listening to the Youngpreneurs Podcast, the number one resource online for under 35-year-olds where we chat twice a week to the most inspiring entrepreneurs in the world. We have it all. If you're looking for inspiration, guidance, or actionable tips to help you transition from that job into a business, or if you're ready to take that business to a whole new level, then this is the place to be. Get ready to live life on your own terms. Youngpreneurs, what's happening? It is Victor here, your host, and I hope you're having a super week. Today we have on the show, all the way from the UK, Matt Pike, and Matt has a pretty cool story. He has uh, he left school a bit earlier, and he's been on quite a journey over the last few years, but I won't spoil it. I'll let him share it, and I'd just like to welcome you first off to the show, Matt. Oh, thanks a lot for having me. It feels good to be here. That's uh, it's absolutely my pleasure. Now, for those who don't know you, give us a bit of a background before we dive into what you do now on your journey into entrepreneurship. Like, was it were you surrounded by entrepreneurs growing up? Was it like a natural transition, and or was there you know different paths set out to you in in high school? Uh, well, the, the business world it kind of always it always intrigued me to be honest. Like, I was when I was younger, I was always watching shows like Dragons Den. Have you, have you heard of that? Dragon's yeah, Den. yeah. Yeah, Dragons Den, The Apprentice, just like things like that. And I, I used to just find it really interesting how people used to build up businesses and how, how business worked and things like that. Just from my early age, like like six or seven maybe. And then just kept learning about it as I grew up. And um, well, when I was in the school playground, I used to sell sweets and things like that. Um, and then when I got uh, to about 16, when I got the chance to leave school, um, I decided to go to college instead and I could, I could have more time to work on my business. Um, so I started up a, an online clothing business, a t-shirt company. Um, so that, that went well. I did that for about two years and then I stopped that recently to focus on a digital marketing agency. So I've been, I've been running that for uh, just over six months now. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, and then also more recently, I've kind of been trying to promote entrepreneurship in young people. So I've, I've been using my Instagram blog, uh, Twitter, just trying to get the entrepreneurial message out to as many people as I can. Um, more people aged, uh, I, I don't know, maybe 16 to 25, try, like, people not sure I'm going to, not sure what they're doing after uh, school or, or university, I'm trying to help them decide what they want to do. We, well, you're in the you're in the perfect place here, mate, because that was what we are we are all about. So, we 
talk, talk us through for those people out there. Yeah, there's a lot who are wanting to start their own business. Um, you jumped out of high school, which is which is pretty awesome, and that obviously took a bit of courage. Uh, what were you were you working at the same time that you were starting your business, or did you just dive into it? Or and you know what kind of uh, bankroll did you need to to get it started? Was it big financials, or did you figure a way to get it done on a on a shoestring budget? I mean, it, it wasn't too much to just start it up, and the money that I did need, my dad was able to just give it to me. Really, it, it wasn't yep. that much. I was I, I was able to just take what I, I own and just reinvest it and reinvest it. And it kind of like snowball. So, initially, the, the first business I did, I didn't really have to invest that much. So, um, just built it up and then kept investing it. So. And were you? Did you work on the side to, to supplement? So while you're reinvesting, or was it no. the perks we still at home and uh, had had that benefit? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was still at college, so um, I was still like fully supported by my parents, and you know, yep. really, really grateful and lucky to to have them. So it was college, the university side. Is that university? Uh, that's is that? just that's just before university. That's sixteen to eighteen. I'm, I'm, yeah, also, okay. I'm also at university now, so I'm studying a degree in marketing as well. Yeah, okay. And how are you how are you finding that? I mean, we, we often talk about that on the show of the, you know, uh, a lot of people, myself included, we kind of see marketing at university as to get you a job, uh, more to, more so than to teach you to market or, you know, people go and do a, a Bachelor of Business and it doesn't really teach them the fundamentals of running a business. It, teaches them the fundamentals to work for it. How have, you, how have you found your experience so far? I mean, I, I'm always like a firm believer in like doing the practical side, but I, I, I just try and take as much information as I can, but both like practical and theory. So yep. I try and take in as much, as, as much as I can from wherever I can really. And you, you can't like, you, you meet a lot of good people at university and you get the opportunity to, to live away and kind of experience uh, some independence before you have to completely be cut off from your parents if you like. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's I think it's a good thing. And what was was there a reason behind like had had your t-shirt business started to dry up and or like was it becoming you know, a more crowded space and you decided to get out of it or what was the what was the reasoning behind that transition? Um, I mean, it, it's a difficult industry. I mean, if anyone if anyone else has started a t-shirt company, then. They'll, they'll know how, like how hard it is to stand out, and they'll, they'll know how hard the, the margins are for the t-shirts. Um, they're, they're quite low, and I, I was specialising in organic cotton t-shirts, um, and it is is just difficult. It's a difficult um, business to run, to be honest. And when I, when I looked at that versus web design and things like that, yeah. I, I took that over it. Um, when, I, when I was setting the business stuff, I, was, I kind of I kind of looked back and. I think that I was enjoying kind of setting the business off rather than designing t-shirts, if you know what I mean. Because yeah. I, I kind of always chose someone else to design t-shirts. Uh, I mean, I, obviously, I have, I have a last day and everything, but um, I kind of prefer the marketing side of it and the, the growth side of it. And so that's obviously taking you into this into this next venture. What, what are you doing with – it's Fly High Media, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so what what are you doing with Fly High Media? How are you planning to stand out, and how are the first few months gone for you? Yeah, pretty well. Um, we've got we've got quite quite a good turnover so far. Um, we start started uh, uh, end of December, start of January. So yeah, it's going well. We started off originally with just website design, social media marketing, and uh, graphic design, but now we do SEO, pay per click. So we've kind of like branched out to, to suit demand, um, yeah, really, and that's it, yeah. And with it, what have you found exciting, uh, or the, cha- the what, what's been your biggest challenge so far with it? Um, I think the challenge is orig- initially what, what's, when you're a startup agency, I think getting that first break that's that's the most difficult. But, I think once you once you get that, um, you're fine. And I, I was lucky to get mine quite early on because if if quite a lot of people have to wait a lot a while, so I was really lucky that it's happened so quickly. Um, so yeah, I think I think the breaks like the the hardest bit, but the most rewarding bit as well. How did how did you get that break? 
Like, how did you get a foot in the door with someone? Was it, you know, that the grind and the hustle, or? Um, um, it, it was it was through uh, it, was one, it was my uncle. It was like a family friend. Um, yeah. His company needed a website doing, and it just so turned out it was a big company, and then uh, he, he brand he it, with that it came in a few more jobs, and then kind of just went from there. Nice. And with when when you're saying we, is it, is it just you at the moment? Is it the one man band at the moment, or are you have you have you got other people on, or do you outsource, or what is what is yeah? If I come on if I come on board to you right now and I say I want you know, uh, social media management, I need yeah a new website, maybe I don't know just a normal website or an e-commerce website, and I need some pay per click and AdWords done. Um, SEO. What what would that look like? Like, are you going? Oh, awesome, awesome! But now I've got heaps of work for myself. Or <laughs> have you got that phase? Of, is it? Have you got a team, or is it just you at the moment? Yeah, I've, I've got I've got two or three other guys that help me. I've got two guys that can help me with the graphic design work. Um, so nice. I, I send I send that to them when I need that help with that. And then I I do all the marketing work. And then I've got someone else that helps me with the web design. But I, I do some of the, I do most of the website design too. But um. There is another guy to help with the website. Yeah. Right and so I guess looking looking forward, uh, are you trying to get systems put in place, or are you happy to keep being the the jack of all trades? I mean, I know I know it's quite a you know you're in early stages, and it many times you have to be the jack of all trades to yeah to make sure the quality's good and the the systems. What I mean, and in three years' time, I'm sure four years' time, five years' time, I'm sure you're not going to be wanting wanting to be the person who's doing all the website design and because re- really that's like a you're a contractor more yeah. than like an age an agency if you know what I mean. Yeah. And yeah. yeah I, I mean, hopefully that doesn't come across too too brash. I mean, I think what you're doing is awesome. And just uh, from your vision side of things, how do you, how do you see the business taking the next step? Uh, within within the next twelve months, I hope to take on the first full time employee. That's, that's that's my aim. That's my goal. Um, I want to be able to do that, and then eventually build the agency up. Um, I want to I want to be able to treat staff the way that I'd I'd want to be treated. Uh, I've I've done work experience in other agencies before, um, and I I kind of like I've got a, a management style in my head that I want to implement. Uh, I haven't seen it done anywhere else, so I'd be interested to see how how that that work um so yeah that's that's what i'd like <laughs> and and you keep going to keep the staff uh like in-house like local oh yeah local definitely. area stuff yeah that's kind of that's kind of one of the selling points of it really we we offer affordable solutions for startups um in, in kind of in the local areas so we, we we do it for the local people uh by local people so we, we don't outsource the like Asia or anywhere like that. Everything's done yep. in England. And what? So what about in five years' time? When you know, will you will you look to service anywhere and everyone? Um, yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, yeah. But at, at the moment, the, the niche is the the small yep. businesses and startups. Um, that, that's, yep. what we, that's what we believe in. That's what I've got the most knowledge on. Because yeah, um, that's, yep. that's what that's what I've done so many times. Um, yeah. 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 And what what did your yeah you know, when you were when you were sixteen and jumping into this business obviously sounded like your uh your dad you know, gave you the loan was that was he obviously supportive of of what you were doing Yeah, he was really supportive. Yeah, um, I mean, he gave me a, a really big help in hand, and he I'd say he's my first business mentor, and he he still helps me every day. Um, yep. Uh, I, t- I talk to him every day, um, even when I'm away in Manchester. Um, yeah, we've got a really good relationship, and he, he helps me out quite a lot. And from from a business mental side of things, who else do you look to? Whether they be like you know people that you actually talk to, or you know books, or blogs, or vlogs, or whatever that you podcast that you follow. Who who else do you draw inspiration out from from the marketing world? Um, there's there's one of my uncles, he's, he's a great mentor for me. My uncle, my uncle Paul, uh, yep. he's, he's, he's just mentored me recently. You know, I go to him if I've got any questions in the business world. Um, and then for the online world, obviously, I've, you've heard of Gary V, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> Gary V, um, on Snapchat, I follow Ask a Millionaire. And yep. 
on Snapchat, I also follow this guy called um, Mr. Good Life. Uh, he's called Farrock something. Um, he, he's an Instagram guru. Like he's he's got a, he's got tens of million Instagram reach, and I follow him closely. Um, yeah. And then in terms of web design, uh, web, and web industry, uh, to do with search engine optimization and things like that, I've got I've got three or four books by Tim Kitchen by Exposure Ninja. They um they're a website design company in Nottingham in England and they've they've written some really great books and I thoroughly recommend them on Amazon. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we I interviewed Nathan Chan. I don't know if you've heard of him from oh, yeah, Founder yeah. Megas from yeah, Founder very, Magazine. Very female. Yeah. yeah, he's uh he's he's fairly good on the on the Instagram side of things too. Yeah. With his with his training and his his growth and all the all the hacks, so you're you're in the social media side of things, social media management that, as well, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What what uh, for your for your target audience, so the startup space. So a lot of obviously a lot of the listeners here are in that space as well. If you were to pick one, oh no, put put them gold gold silver bronze. What is your uh, Social media platform that you're the most bullish on that you're like i'm I'm all in this with all my clients, and then what what would be the next two that you'd use well it depends it depend it would depend on the business um, and the all right, let's say let, let's say uh you're a a brick and mortar like a lo- a locally based business what would you what would you be looking at brick and mortar business I'd recommend facebook and LinkedIn. Definitely. Yep. Those, those two first, and then maybe maybe Twitter, maybe for um, Instagram and Snapchat. I'd, I'd recommend them to kind of like um, the, the younger audience because I don't think many fifteen to twenty five year olds are gonna really need that, are they? But yeah, yeah. As, as as much as other people. Yep. And what about say to a digital? A digital mar- a digital marketer or someone with online products, whether it be e commerce or or you know training programs or mentoring coaching, what side of the online marketing world would you go down there? Uh, I'd use first firstly I'd use Twitter and then YouTube, Facebook, and then Snapchat and then Instagram. I mean <clears throat> they're all pretty equally important to be honest because you can put photos and videos on all of them, but yeah, you'd have to look at your exact exact ideal customer and age, and then you can sort of judge it a little bit better. So for you, Fly High Media, what's what's your what's the social media platform that's exciting you the most at the moment, or giving you the not necessarily the most ROI, but maybe the most reach and the organic um, and sorry, uh, the most interaction and and leads. Um, we, we mainly do things offline, but. We get quite a bit off Facebook, like we get direct messages on Facebook, um, and then we try and interact on Instagram as well with other users. Um, same with Twitter as well. Um, but we we mainly we mainly do offline. Yep. And by offline, what is that? Door to door? Is that? No, um, that, that's kind of that's kind of like networking. And I threw, yep. I threw LinkedIn as well. I forgot about that one. Sorry. Um, we we yep. use LinkedIn as well. Um, just cut cut this linking in with people that we think that are more likely to um, be interested in the products or services. That's what yeah, that's what cool. And with your, so with with your networking, with your, with LinkedIn, obviously it, it's pretty powerful. Um, are you, you, you said you're in pay-per-click, are you, do you, do you work through Facebook or Twitter ads or LinkedIn ads or anything like that? Like, have you have you gone down that path as of yet? Yeah, Facebook ads. That's, that's mainly what it does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I oh, say so pay per click through that. Not as I was thinking um, Google AdWords, but. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We do. We can do Google. Yeah, we do Google AdWords too. But. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, talk talk us through it. Yeah, you're you're obviously at university. You've got this this startup company going as well. Uh, what does your day look like? And yeah, you know, it's obviously a, a bit of a split and a bit of a yeah hard hard work on the balance side of things. So what does it what does a day look like for you? Yeah, definitely. Like um, regardless of being in university or not, I wake up like check my emails in bed and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> it's 
it's probably like my, my most productive habit to do it before you like while you're still in bed but yeah <laughs> if i've got any anything on my mind like when i'm first working up i like physically write it down on a piece of paper so i don't forget it and it kind of wakes you up a little bit more as well um and then i either <clears throat> go to university or do some work first and then try to fit in the gym at some point and then have something to eat uh like in the late 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 afternoon and then try and do some work uh in the evening and then routinely uh in bed i usually read for about 45 minutes uh whatever the book it is and then right before i'm gonna go to sleep i write a to-do list so that i'm not thinking all night um I kind of write a, a big list it's usually on my phone actually it's on the the, the um apple app list something like that reminders um just just so that I, i've got a clear head to go to sleep on and with your uh, you know with university and that side of things i mean i remember when i was at university it was you get a lot of downtime even though people think try and make out that they're really busy yeah you, know, you kind of see how yeah and un- unproductive a lot of people are are you are you trying to fill in all those hours when you don't have class and stuff like that and and do you try and fill it with university work or do you uh, uh, what what takes your your balance if you've got a couple of hours gap um i li- i'd like to say it's uni work but uh, <laughs> this kind of com- this kind of comes over it <laughs> um, yeah because it, it, some things can't really wait and i, I do try and do a lot of this but I do try and balance it as much as I can. Um, but yeah. So, hyper- hypothetical, one year's one year's time, you're turning over, I don't know, six figures, you're super, super busy. Have you got any hesitation that you'd walk out of university? Um, it's a good question. Uh, uh, probably, yeah. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I mean, you can always go back to it, can't you? It's, it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's not do or die. So I'd I'd rather take the chance while I could, uh, yeah. than than kind of regret it. I mean, I'm not trying to push you out of university by any <laughs> no. of the stretches. No. It was. It, I mean, it, it, it like I hit you up with the question initially, and it, and a lot of it is, yeah, you, you know why you want to be there. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot of zombies walking around your university at the moment with no idea why they're actually there. Yeah, sorry. That they go, oh, I might do a business degree because business might be good, or I might do a you know a health related degree because I I like PE at school, or yeah, there's there's a lot of ridiculous reasons why a lot yeah. of people are at university. But I mean, it seems like you've got your head screwed on around that. When yeah. you're reading at night, what what are you, what are you reading, and what would your top two book recommendations be to everybody out there listening? Uh, at the moment, I'm learning more more about content marketing, and my my yep. my, my favorite author, Tim Kitchen, he's just come out with a new book. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Content Marketing and Digital PR. Uh, nice. So that's something that I've written up on. Um, and the, the, there's another book called The Google Checklist uh, by Hart CMS. That's another agency that's written a book. Uh, I fully recommend that too. Um, so I'm reading those two at the moment. Um, nice. And I, I tend to stick to the to the non-fiction books. Um, yep. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at my bedside table, and there, there's not there's not too many. Yeah, uh, there's not. Oh, I should say there's not any fiction books uh, <laughs> next next to it. But uh, you're talking about you use lists on Google. What are your What are your couple of favorite apps or? Or websites or plugins or whatever that you'd recommend to others out there listening at the moment to, to simplify their lives or make it a bit easier. Oh, um, well, the the things that I couldn't live without, obviously, my iPhone, like in general. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got this. I've got this app called Yahoo News Digest, and that's a website where it kind of like summarizes like every news story from every news source and puts it into 10 little, uh, 10 little headlines. Have you heard of that one before? No, I haven't. I haven't heard that, but I've heard of, I've heard of similar-ish ones, but yeah, the make, makes the uh, reading of, <laughs> of things a bit more consumable. Yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, that's it. And then YouTube as well. I, I use YouTube quite a lot as well. well I use it all yep. the time. From, from a from a productive side of things, or do you find but, yourself oh, yeah. lost and wondering how you're watching ducks doing <laughs> marching in a row or something? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I try, I try and use it for educational purposes, and I, I manage, I manage to stick to it most of the time. But it's, it's, it is quite hard to stick on track. But I, I use it yeah. for educational purposes mostly. So, what's your best and worst trait that that you find in the entrepreneurial space? Like, I don't want to know if you pick your nose, but um, <laughs> if, what what so far? Yeah, you know, you've you've obviously had some success, and you've had some success in sport. We haven't we haven't really delved into into that, but what do you think the biggest attribute that you've got, and then the thing that often you feel maybe slows you down the most? Um, probably my best trait is like I kind of never give up. Like I, I've told you about the companies that I, I have had, but I've I've had loads of things that have that, that have never worked out. So I just kept going all the time. Probably my worst trait um, is not knowing when to stop. Like I, I do keep on going. Like I go, <laughs> I, I I kind of like never know when to stop working because I, I I do spend like a lot of time on everything and I kind of overtire myself sometimes, and then that, that's kind of a, a bad. I think to do sometimes it doesn't, yeah. doesn't do it doesn't do it very well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, got last couple of questions. If you you're on your deathbed in a hundred years time, what okay. you're looking back, what what does what does success look like to you? What is a successful life for you? Uh, it's waking up. To, to me, it's it's waking up happy every single day and not not regretting anything. Um, being around people that being around people that you're happy with. And looking forward to the up and coming day that that's what it is for me. Yeah, cool. And final thing, two years time, Fly Home Media, what's it doing? Where are you? What's your project like? What 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 do you expect it to be in, in two years' time? Two years time? Yeah. Oh, uh two. two years everyone time. everyone sets everyone sets these ten year goals. I wanna know what you're doing in, in six months and in two years and then <laughs> uh um, in six months, I want to hit my first financial goal, and then in two years' time, I want to have four full-time employed staff, um, and then in five years' time, a ten, ten team, ten, ten strong team. Does that make sense? <laughs> and then, yep. Uh, in ten years' time, hopefully, I'll have like over over thirty people in the agency. I hope. Nice. You hope. I think I think you'll get there. But uh, I just want to thank you and just welcome you to the Youngpreneurs family. If people want to check out more about you or find out, um, yeah, find out more about Fly High Media, find out more about you, where can they go and what can they do? Uh, they can go on either Twitter, Instagram, uh, or Snapchat. Everything is Matthew J Pike. It's M A T C H E W J P Y K E. And then Fly High Media, if you just search it on Facebook, it should come up. Uh, that's F-L-Y-H-I-G-H Media. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, we'll link all of that in the show notes at PassiveIncomeYoung.com where you can find everything we've talked about, all the links, all the books, and uh, all those ways to get in touch so finally just want to thank you and I look forward to catching up with you in, in a couple of years time and seeing you flying high oh, thanks very much thanks for your time thanks for inviting me on thanks for listening to the Youngpreneurs Podcast this was proudly brought to you by the Podcast Institute the number one training resource to take your business from chasing leads to leads chasing you and from an absolute amateur to a full blown authority. If you are looking to take your business to the next level then a podcast is the obvious answer. You can get national and global exposure in a very fast time and it's just exactly what I've done with this podcast. So if you want to find out more get a checklist on how you can get started for under $60 and to find out more through a small training video that I've prepared you all then please check out passiveincomeyoung.com forward slash podcast training